We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, and the knowledge of you. And we love you, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you're going to supernaturally let us learn the language, God. You're going to supernaturally, we're going to learn, there's going to be such a grace on it, God. And, and just as we learned your word, God, we're going to learn the words and things that you want us to learn, Father. And we worship the truth today. And we worship the Spirit today, the Spirit of the living God. And Father, we ask for a deeper understanding, a, a well, God, uh, just to go further and deeper and wider and higher in you, Father God, today, yes. that we'll know you more, God. And as you're doing the things in us and around us and through us and to us during the week and the times that we're here, God, that we just remember and keep steadfast and embracing you through the fasting, through the prayers, through the tribulation, whether it's big, small, through anything that we're, is coming against us because we are overcomers of this world by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Whether it feels like we're failing or winning or succeeding or losing, we, are, we have the victory in Christ Jesus. No matter how far we've come or how slow we progressed, we still have the victory in Christ Jesus if we don't let go and we stay steadfast and unmovable in Him. In Him we have our being and we move in Him and we're seated with Him in heavenly places. So we thank You for that, God. And Your job, Father God, is as we submit to You, You make us one, even as You and the Father are one. So we thank You, Father, for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and the knowledge of You, Father God, with understanding, God. Give us wisdom to know You and to know the power of Your resurrection and to purify our hearts, Lord, that there be nothing found in it, God. No evil, no sorcery, no divination, no witchcraft, nothing, and no hidden agendas, Father God, that nothing, there be no fault found in us, just as Daniel walked, God. Let us walk like that in the Spirit today, God. Or even if they lie and make false witness against us, God, we'll stand still, uncondemned, in faith and boldness, God, that we are walking in the truth, and there is no condemnation those that walk in that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Today's message is called Truth in the Spirit. John 4, 1 through 24. When, therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again unto Galilee. And he that is must deeds needs to go through Samaria. Then cometh he of Samaria when he calls Sechra near Parcel. In the ground of Jacob gave his son of Joseph. Now Jacob's well. Jacob's well was there. A well when you're thirsty. Jacob had a well and he was, it was right there. Jesus chose this well to go to for a drink. Jesus, therefore being wearied with his journey, sat on the well. And about the sixth hour, there came a woman to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away unto the city to buy meat to buy dinner. Then said the woman to Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me? I am, a, I am a, a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew, knewest the gift of God, and who it was that saith to thee, Give me drink, Thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, I have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then he has this living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob. So this woman's sitting there and he's saying, give me a drink. He's setting her up to give her a revelation. He's setting up for her to ask questions. He's asking her for something, knowing that she can't give him nothing, but knowing that he has everything for her that she needs. So he broke 
the, the, he broke the protocol because he's not supposed to speak to them. He broke, uh, he, and, and, and then he, he, he broke the ice on, on um, you know, to talk to them. How many know when you're in a grocery store, someone's like, God's telling you, go talk to them. You're like, well, I don't know what to say. How am I going to approach them? How am I going to do this? Well, if you have this wisdom in the Spirit of God, he, He'll give you awesome words. It was very natural. He said, she's there, get a drink. He's there. Give me a drink. But he knew he, he was using that. So the wisdom of God will come on you. And then he'll start to speak to you about that person. So that was what was going on right there. And he sat there and it was about the well. It was somewhere where you went to drink. It was a place where people came. Knowing that there's water there. And it was Jacob's well. Thou art greater than our father Jacob. The, 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 and he drank therefore himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. See, he's got her thinking. And then he's got her telling him what it is. He knew exactly what it was. But he was bringing it in, 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 into, into action a relationship with her. And he said, Whatsoever drinketh of the water that I'll give, him shall never thirst. Now he now he's raising her 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 hunger, her desire, her longing. What is this guy? And her her she's getting interested. Shall give him that him well shall spring up into everlasting life. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me some of this water. See, people start asking you for it if it's good stuff. What are you selling? In a sense, not you're not selling anything because you can't sell the gospel, but what are you offering? Does it sound good? Or is it religious and dry and legalistic? Or is, does it really sound good? And he said, give me some of that water. I'll never thirst. He said, come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, call the husband. He knew that she didn't have a husband. So he also is getting her to start to think about something that she was not right in her life about it, why she needs that water. Now he's not only giving her, making her desire the water, now he's making her why she needs the water. And how we know that Jesus is the water. And that thirst neither come and draw. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Now the carnal carnal thing, you'd be like, I miss God. I mean, you know, that sometimes you can say some things and think you miss God, but all you're doing is promoting them to speak more about something. A lot of times we say, oh man, I miss the Holy Spirit. Do you have a husband? Remember sometimes I'll say, oh, you have a brother or sister? But it wasn't even about the brother or sister to have, it was about someone else's brother and sister. And then they'll be like, oh, Mike, you know, I'm just making, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'll say, oh man, I miss God. I was but it brought up, but all of a sudden, it like something in them shifted, and they were like concerned about that. And you're like, well, this is good, and you just go with it. But then you go home that day, and you're like, wow, I missed God. And then you get frustrated, you don't even want to do it anymore because you're like, but sometimes we're so in our own little concept because it's not always what we think and say. And then he said this, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. See, if you're really ahead of the game, You'd be right on top of that. And he said, well, thou hast well said. Thou hast had five husbands. And the one thou hast is not thy husband. Now he's bringing conviction to her heart. Why, why does she need it? Then the Holy Spirit's work. Jesus is the Holy Spirit in the flesh. Working with her now that why, why she needs it. Because now, not only do I desire it because it's good and I'll never thirst again. Now the second thing is, I... the. the the other thing, and then the other thing is, now I need it, because without it, I'll, I'll, and then, so he's getting into this thing of the need for him. And that's what the, God, but about preaching the gospel is all about. It's not only just about do it and say, it's what the need for it, and the hunger for it. So our fathers worshipped in this mountain. It says, the woman did not perceive that thou art a prophet. And he's like, wow, you got it. How'd you know that? And they talked about Jerusalem and the place where the men ought to worship. And he's like, 
and ought to worship. So now she's partnering with the truth. Jesus sitting there at the well. And the truth is beginning to set her free. And she's now feeling the spirit of Jesus because her heart's being convicted about her sin. So right there, she's encountering, and now God does that with the Holy Spirit with you, because you're now a representation of, of the body of Christ, walking with God, and you're not Jesus, but you're, and He's in you just like the Holy Spirit was in Him. So as you work, He works with you, and there's a need. So there, and there was a well. And everybody came to that well in the natural, but how many know everything in the natural, there's a spiritual meaning. And Jesus was sitting out in the well because He says, now I'm the well. That men will come draw from. I am, and I will give you drink, and you'll never thirst. And then he says this. And the woman believed me, and the hour come, and he says this. And the, and, and the fathers worship on this mountain, and say unto them, Jerusalem is the place men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when there shall neither this mountain nor Yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Yea, worship, and you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So this is the Samaritan goes, you worship things you don't even know. Remember they're worshiping dead guys, dead gods, and all this, and they had all everyone was worshiping all the time anyway. People have been worshiping since Adam and Eve. Whatever you pay homage to, whatever you bow to, whatever you give over your power to is what you worship. And that's basically worships God created man to worship Him and Him alone. So, it's very simple that worship doesn't matter. It's just whatever you, you, you put, put on your throne, the throne of your heart. He said, the hour comes now, and the worship, and he says this, and you worship, no, not what you worship. Salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming. And now he's talking about us, the Gentiles. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in the Spirit and in the truth. And also those are the Jews that receive the salvation as well. Remember, Paul said there's no Greek nor Jew. There's no bond nor free. There's no male nor female. Um, we're all one in the Spirit. Remember? So what does he mean? In the Spirit. God's bringing the world together unto Him. Shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. So He's not only seeking in the Spirit, but in the truth. How do you worship in the truth? Well, obviously Jesus is the truth. And you worship one another. So, he worships in the truth. You worship in Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, then we worship together. Is in the truth. Because we are the body of Christ. So, God is spirit. And they that worship Him must do it in spirit and in truth. And God gave me some, some things, and as I'm going on, I'm going to show you things He spoke to me this morning in prayer. Religion is going somewhere, but God is not there. See, Jesus was at that well that day. See, in religion, you can go, if you're religious, you can go somewhere, but you might not meet where you went to go. So yeah, it, it's not always coming together that's, spiritual or it's it's only when you go and where, where you go where you think you're going to get is not there then that's religious it's false religion is doing something because you feel you have to but you do it but it really you don't want to so see religion is I'm going to do this, you know, like Catholics on Sunday, Christmas, they go at midnight. I got to go there to the mass, you know, you know I gotta go. it's religious. Now, if you went there and you 
God led you there, and you go there, that is not religious to you, even if you do it that time every single year. Because God led you there. So, but you feel it, it's really because you don't want to. Because your heart is not in it. So whenever our heart is absent from what God is telling us to do, we become religious. And I say, man, I used to love to go to prayer Friday night. Yeah, I gotta go to prayer. Because you became religious. Not because prayer is different. We become different. If someone once said, the spiritual now becomes religious, see, that was spiritual when it started. So if God starts something and He's still there, then it's not religious. Now, if you go there and you don't even feel God, then you might have sin and offense in your heart or you just might be religious and not be hungry for Him. Does it make that religious anymore? It makes you religious. The thing that you are doing, if God ordained it, we do it. Because, so, just example, and you might say, God, everyone has different circumstances, but you know, I'm going to come Sunday, or whatever. So we're on the door, but God told me, Shane, if I'm in town, whether I feel it or not, I've come, and he, I've come here religious, and it sucks. But he's still here. Other people are like, man, it was awesome. Like, man. But I wasn't tapped in. It wasn't me coming here his fault. It was my fault. So, but God told Shane, Sunday, one, Wednesday, that. I got to be here. So I can get religious a lot more than anyone else. But when I come here and I'm in the spirit and in truth, I get blessed. Because I, first of all, I'm obeying God because He told me to do it. And second of all, there's always something to receive from one another. Because every joint supplies. Now we have people all over, all over the world that we're supplying to them because they haven't found a place that they can come. And God will bless that to a level because they're still being obedient because of their circumstances. See, God is a God of circumstances when it's a personal level. And God spoke to me something about this as well today. It's like, God is no respecter of persons, but He's a respecter of righteousness. What someone else might be able to do, you might not be able to get away with it. Because we all also have our own personal relationship with the Spirit and the truth. So when we try, or when, so the thing is, is when we stay in the Spirit and in the truth, and those that walk in, in, the, in, the, in, in the Spirit are walking in the truth. You can look at Romans 1. So, but I'm going to stick to this because... So, example. God might tell you. And you get excited. Oh, take communion every day. Even every day in your prayer room. But, three months later, you're still doing it. That thing didn't become religious. You did. Now, if God moves you away from it, that's different. But then He's going to replace it with something else to worship Him. So... You take communion anything, or you go on a fast, and then four, four days later, you're not even thinking about it or doing it in the Spirit. You don't want to do it anymore, and it sucks. But when you're in the... Everything in the Spirit is good. Everything. Because God is Spirit. He is good. And when we worship Him in Spirit and truth, He's walking with us, working with us, and we are becoming one in one accord with Him and the body of Christ. So, in this... You see that we take... And then if you feel, but there might have been a time God told you to stop. Even in between that. But you got religious before you can even... And you just do it now as an act. But that thing is not religious. Or you're saying that Jesus' blood on the cross is religious. Right. When He says, as often as you do this, by the Spirit. That's right. So He says, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Sometimes you'll never do it and that's religious. <laughs> well, I'm not doing that anymore. That's religious. See, we, we almost catch ourselves a lot of times becoming religious, doing something that wasn't religious, that we made religious, and now it's religious, but it's really not religious. You're religious. 
You guys follow me? Yeah. Well, prayer is the same way. In this Word, God tells us to do that. Pray without ceasing. So we got to make prayer spiritual so we like it. We love it because we are made of the Spirit. we got to make taking communion. Love and one another. Coming together because God ordained it. And if He's called you to a Word or to a group of people, He wants us to be present because there's a blessing. And I'm going to get into that because He's done that. Because we have seven churches. Because And there he said the church of this city. Because you can't be together. And that's why these big feasts that they come, solemn assemblies come together. But when God ordains something, there's a blessing in obedience. Whether we feel it or not, it isn't the thing we've got to stop doing. Because it's our heart we need to change and get back in the Spirit. Because God's not... Because if He stopped everything when it got religious, then there would be never nothing. Because everything gets religious at times. But it's us that get religious. Not the thing that's holy that God ordained. The offering got religious past about can be. But some people that are needing something, some people that love, you have Cain and Abel. Cain was religious. Abel was excited about his offering. He, Abel did it in the Spirit. Cain did it. It was still ordained by God and it was holy. One was religious. He didn't even think much of it. The other one, one got blessed, one didn't. Even though Abel got murdered, he's in glory. Cain had a terrible life, right? You say, well, he got blessed, he got murdered for a while, whatever, but it was great because he's with God. Because everyone that was righteous before Jesus, was, the blood came on them too, and he has... There's a great cloud of what he has released in Abraham's bosom, whether it's a parable or not. They all, even, even Moses appeared with Jesus on the mount. One was in the spirit, Cain and Abel, one was religious. So we stay out of the spirit, we stay more religious, we become religious. So the key to not being religious is the walking in the spirit. We may think we're in the Spirit, because we all do sometimes, but you can know it when you really try to press in and you don't feel God. Because He's Spirit. And if you're in the Spirit, there's a connection always. It's easy to flow. And if you come together, you should tap right into it, because God is in the midst. So 1 Corinthians 6.17 says this, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one Spirit. Are we joined to the Lord? So He is the truth. So we're one spirit. So we can come here and be religious and worship Him, but that's not worshiping in spirit and in truth. That's just being religious. And we're supposed to do it. Does, does worship become, become religious? Why do other things end up becoming religious? Because somebody else has a wrong definition of something and we're feeling it and we think, but when we obey the truth of the Word, there's a blessing. And truth is magnified. Whether we like it or not, we need to make our heart like it so we can receive the blessing. So if you don't like something, you're not going to receive it. So you need to learn to like what God's doing and, and, has, and is doing on the earth. And not try to do our own thing. But what He has ordained for us to do. 1 Corinthians 12 12 through 20. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been to made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. For the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I have no need. And it goes on, you all know, in the ear. But the whole body, where an eye, where are the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where is the smell? But now we have that there set members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. So is that religious? No, it's truth. It's truth. It can become religious. If anything we don't want to do becomes religious. I don't want to 
go to church. That's because now it's religious. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to pray, but when you say, God, let me desire that. And then he starts to move, and in his presence, you get addicted to him, which is his presence. Amen. Some people cannot handle freedom because they become religious. Without full maturity of the truth, they can become mavericks or independent, and such so much by cutting off themselves from a blessing. I see it all over. And then people make their Facebook page their church. Or their some connected, some disconnected, some people, because they know a lot. But it becomes where they get their affirmation. Our affirmation needs to come from one another, whether it be correction, exhortation. It can't be from strangers. You don't know there's a physical thing that when we come together, there's a blessing in it. Because God ordained it. And Paul said, do not forsake the assembling together. Don't forsake it. Why? Because it's going to be a temptation. So the independent spirit is we're cutting ourselves off from the blessing. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. So obedience produces blessings. What end will become religious to one person to another can become the source of life. Someone can come here full of demons and be set free. Someone else can come here and be religious and get nothing. You've seen that in nations. Was it that thing that was wrong? Or was it that person? Right. So we got to understand that. That's what we need to understand and get because I get religious and I don't, but I have to. Thank God, but I hate it when I don't want to come. But like on Sundays, I've gotten myself where I really like it because we're all hung. There's like something more. We should have that same <coughs> feeling and thing whenever we want to come together. Because God is, it's not about a day. It's about heart, and it's about unity in one. So when we come together, there's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So in 1 Corinthians 11, 24-34, it says, When he had given thanks, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance. He didn't say do it every day or this. He said do in remembrance. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of my the New Testament of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we know all nature of things. People do that so religiously. Because you even see it. They're not even doing it with faith. They're not doing it with love. They're doing it in tradition. Mm -hmm. So you don't even want to do that with them because it's not done in the Spirit. It's not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. You're not really in communion. It's a work of religion. It's a work of, of you can make it a new Christian law because it's, it's a work of, of, of we do this every first of the month and they've been doing that for 30 years. Every first Sunday of the month we're going to take our communion on and they do it. It's, us, it's like, no, but if it's done by the Spirit, even if you do it every day, it can be glorious. Yeah. So the same manner, he took the cup and he took the bread and he said, take this, this is my, the Lord's, show the Lord's death till he comes. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord. Unworthily, I can say, or do it religiously. Unworthily or religiously, same thing. You're not thinking nothing of it, it's just something. It's not a big deal. You know, it's not a big deal if we come together and we don't. It's not a big deal if I don't do this. Well, to God, things are a big deal that we don't think are a big deal. And major sin that people are struggling with isn't even a big deal sometimes to God than something simple. I've seen that because I've seen the consequences of things in people's lives and other things that I'm like, man, that guy should be like, Whoa, and just grace, grace. And then this, it's like, oh my God, what are you going? Just something simple like God said, do this, and they don't do it. Something that they're fully capable of doing. It's not like they're in bondage to this sin that they hate. You know what I mean? So that's what exactly what, what so there's a there's something in that. So it says, he that eats and drinks unworthily or religiously, it says, but no, okay, guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him that eat the bread and drink the cup, for who eateth and drinketh unworthily or religiously eat and drink damnation to himself. Not Discerning the Lord's body. 
Not discerning the Lord's body, meaning, well, if you're the hand, you're the foot, you're the knee, and we're all supposed to be supplying one to another, and I don't pay attention to that because I got my relationship with God. God doesn't like that. He's a God of unity. He designed the church. He doesn't like all the... He doesn't like the industry of the church. He doesn't like the, the basic... Uh, um, the church has become a business and all that. Of course not. But the true church, he designed it. It's his actual DNA. It was the reason he died was for what we're doing right now. Amen. He died for that. Not only, not only for us, but for... Right? He said that, that I will fitly join the church together as one body, one soul. And he is in the midst of it. So then we have, yeah, there's seven churches. All of them had a different assignment in a way because all of them went a different kind of a different direction. So whatever it might be, but they were still together. So God will have His body all together all over the place. And then He has others that aren't... Uh, uh, now I'm not talking about the, the harlot church or the apostate church where they're all religious and it's all that. I'm talking about... And there's remnant all together that God wants to bring together in every, every city of the world, most likely. So basically, so we see that right there. So we see that's God's plan. So he said to the church of this, but at the end, what is the revelation? We're all one in the Spirit. But we all can't be in one place as they were in the upper room on that one day. But if we're all in the Spirit and truth on the earth, that's a great revival. That might be when Jesus even comes back because He poured out His Spirit in the in, in spirit on the day of Pentecost, if he comes back himself when we're finally in that place where everyone has been blood washed. And then you know when you come into a room, God gave me this, and we start to worship and our heart opens, there's a sound that only one group of people can make. And when there's people that are there, because God knows everybody's sound and everybody's the way they worship, and when everybody's in one accord with that, he opens up the heaven. He said that I inhabit the praises of my people. So, in a sense... There's a sound that only all of us can make when we release ourselves to the Lord. And corporately, God hears it and releases such a, an oil down. It says like the oil comes from the... When, when, when you worship in spirit and in truth and in unity, it's like the oil that comes down Aaron's beard, but it says down his garments. That was the reputation of Christ and the church. And when we're in one, that Holy Spirit comes down upon us and downs a whole garment. It's the whole body. Now, if there's a, a body over there that's in truth but not in spirit, they're not going to get that. Now, if there's a place over there that's in spirit but they don't like the word, the truth, they're not going to get that. But when the church is worshiping in spirit and in church, and truth, and you are worshiping in spirit and truth, you can get that. Because that's what it is for us. That's our promise. So that's why we contend to pull people out of religion. We want because we know not only do we get blessed, and not only are we lacking from getting, but also that person is. So it says, examine thyself, let you not eat that bread or drink that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily, eateth and drinketh to himself damnation. For this cause many are... And this, is, this is what happens when we get religious. We become weak and sickly, and many sleep. Religious people are sleeping. They're not warfare. They're not watching and praying and waiting because it's religious. You know, there's groups that everything's religious. Now, fasting's religious. Praying's religious. Going to church every Sunday is religious. But it really isn't religious. You become religious if you don't desire that because God ordained it. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, we love each other, but it's like God doesn't want us even there because man wants you there. God wants you to zero the first works. So when you return to your first love, you return to your first works, and you return to the first, the first things in your life that you fell in love with, which is Christ Himself. So He says, many are sick. This is spiritual sickness here. Yeah, I don't know how much physical could happen, but spiritually, when it says sleep, that there's a meaning, and that means die. And there's also a spiritual meaning that means you're dead in the spirit. Like, you don't even know what's going on. You walk in zombies. Like, you go to these churches, you know, you fall in the crowd out your head, but you don't even know what's going on. The spirit of the world or nothing because you're religious. And you're going there because everyone else is going there and 25 other thousand people are going there. 
but you're religious and you like to go there, but it wasn't how you first met God. If you really like to go there and God's not there, you really like religion. Or you really like the, the ambience of the whole thing. It's like everyone that's here. There's celebrities here. There's this person here. And this is a famous place. So I'm here. And I go to this place. The whole thing about the world gets into it. And that's why they get all the spirits of the age get, get filtered into these types of, of these mega churches, different things, because you're ne you never really went there because you're hungry for the bread of life. And because the well's there, because he left years ago, you're there because of you. And then you might even start, you fall in love with that, and you, you're even far beyond being religious, you're lost. You go from religious to becoming lost if you don't worship Him in spirit and in truth. For we judge ourselves, but we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You know, as I, I was saying, God, I was thinking about this, I was like... God, man, I was like, I, the other morning I was just like, God, it's so awesome that the, the group of people you have, us around, whether how small it is, whatever it might be, these are people that are going to be with us watching, waiting for the Lord return till the end. It's an awesome thing. And if we don't love one another in that, you know, it's like we could, you know, you've seen, we've seen things. And we could be somewhere else, something. And you could start, start, start to... To um, uh, my heart started to, cause you guys are really awesome, and I was like, it's really a blessing. Instead of looking at it in numbers or looking at it in this or looking at everybody's faults, it's an awesome unity that God's doing. And if we continue to look at that and look at the purpose, and as we, as we begin to obey God and do what He says, He's going to do even more and greater things than we've ever accomplished. Just because we're going through the fire doesn't mean we're going to get burned. Just because all it means is we're going to become better, holier, and less religious. And we might get religious because all it is is we're resisting the fire. And we cannot. We need to be open with one another because we're one spirit. And we're one body. If my knee's affected, I don't you think my arm's going to know? Or my head at least because my brain is going to say, hey, i got to get help for that knee. i got to get some medicine on that. i get some blood of Jesus. i got to get some holy anointing oil or whatever. But if the, the knee's somewhere else in uh, Timbuktu, and nobody knows what's going on, but they're with the Lord, it's not, it's not ordained. It's not, they are not, you cannot survive like that. It's, it's not going to, because it's not, it's not ordained by the Lord. So here we go. Unless you're an island, and it's you, then God will have grace for that. Because you're not being disobedient, you have no choice. See, it's not a law, it's a spiritual matter, and it's truth. So it says, Wherefore, my brother, when we come together to eat and tarry for one another, and if a man hunger, let him eat, but a come together, not unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. And God's a God of order. So there's such a blessing when we're commanded to seek the Lord. On our own and get our own oil too. We have to do that. My God, we can't just do this. There's a double. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is, and then people, all they do is try to talk about all that. Oh, go in your prayer, go in prayer, prayer. But then they're like, and then you got all these people just dispersing all out, and they're all praying, I got this from God, and they're going up there. But there's, they don't know, they don't have no home, they don't have no family. They're all basically spiritual bastards because they're not submitting to nobody but themselves and the Holy Spirit. That's where deception comes. That's why God said we need each other. Why? Because there's a devil. God isn't so much concerned about that. He's so much more concerned about protection. Protection. Because there is an adversary. And his name is the devil. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes. And when sheep go on, what happens? Why? The sheep that runs off on his own. Why does the, the shepherd get so... Because most likely he's going to get eaten by a wolf. Because he's got no protection. And he's got no one else looking out for him. Maybe he's down eating and the other one's not eating. But there's a wolf coming. This one will start making some noise. Meh! And the one that's eating will look up and they'll all run. And the shepherd will come and will wear the shepherd. But if the sheep's 10, 10, 10 uh, 40,000 miles away. So there's a reason that they shepherd many. 
and one. And Jesus is our shepherd, but he also ordained us to submit one to another because it's needed for protection. And it's needed because every joint supplies the other. It's very important. And I don't know why guys got me on this, but it's very important. And to command as an assemble, assemble and we, as, as a commandment, we assemble and we're blessed. Personal relationship on its own will not, uh, it's not, it's coming to, I missed someone else typing real fast, cause I, but coming to get a relationship on its own isn't enough. It's needed, it's a must, and it's a commandment as well. And also it's commanded to come together. So we need to balance the two. Both must be spirit and truth. Together is to complete the truth. Jesus did not die for us to be solo. He died for a church, a living temple. Right? And it says if God builds the house, so what house is He building? He's building one in heaven with all of us, but He's also building houses of protection. Because if the glory is in there, and we are the house of God, we need to protect one another's truth. We need to protect one another's spirit. We need to look out for one another. That's why he said it can't, uh, am I my brother's keeper? And we're supposed to be our brother's and sister's keeper. Not lording over or not but keeper because, and that's why we're like, what are you so worried about? Because it's, it's God in us that's worried about. It's our spirit that's concerned. Because really sometimes it's none of our business. But it, God makes it our business. One to pray, one to dig a little bit, or one to know. It just doesn't matter, but God will make it. Because He wants to protect us. Because there's such a storm coming that many are going to be tossed to and fro. And if they're on their own, they're not going to make it. They're going to be pulled out to the ocean and swallowed up by Leviathan. Right. Jesus said we don't have a relationship with each, with each other. We're not having a true one with Him. Yeah. Amen. That's true. That's the word. Amen. So seven. there's seven churches... Explain, but they're all we're all one at the end. And Jesus is talking about every church is, but it's all one at the end. But not until the end. I can't be in ten million uh, houses every Sunday or whatever day you meet. But we're all in the house of God. But He's ordained that, or He would just say, wouldn't it be safer for Christians to to just have a once they get saved, to everyone just stay in your house and hide from the world, and you'll be safe, and no one will know what you are. And then you'll be protected and you'll get an awesome relationship with God and you'll and, and everything will be great. And then basically, you know, and no one will know. And then when they come to arrest everyone and do all these things, no one will know because, you know, there's no one's heard about you. But how are you a light then? And how bright is the light if you all come together? And how much protection? And when he calls that I will I will have my house and 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 and, and, and that the gates of hell will not prevail. That's, we're the house of God, and He doesn't want any gates of hell prevailing in our life personally. And we take communion and the bread of the Lord and the, and, and the blood as corporately and together. But every time we come in and, and, and worship Him in spirit and truth, we are taking communion in the spirit. We're taking His blood and His body because we're coming one in agreement with Him and the body of Christ, Him being the chief cornerstone and the head of the church. John 17 says this, Almost done. Lifted up his eyes and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that it should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only and true God, truth, and Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. I have glorified Thee on the earth. I have finished the work which Thou gave me to do. We have it. He did. His work, His finished work was the cross. God's still working through us. He was talking about His earthly body there. A lot of people say it's done. We can do what we want. But no. Jesus said it was finished because He did and he defeated the devil but if it was just finished like that and all it was was a prayer then why do we even why do we even meet just take over the media say everyone doesn't want to go to hell and not say this prayer hey live for yourself 
I mean, that's basically what, what false doctrine ends up becoming. I have glorified thee on the earth, and I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. And Father, glorify me, that my own self, that the glory that I had with thee before the world was, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Out of the world. Thy they were, and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me. We have the words of life. He gave them to us. He gave them to the apostles. The apostles carried on. Paul wrote, wrote the scriptures. And the Holy Spirit's in us. So it says, Out from thee, they have believed that thou hast done and sent me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Quit praying for the world. It's going to hell. Pray for souls, but souls, different story. I'm not saying don't pray for your sick neighbor and pray for the world. Oh God, change the government. Come on. Why are you wasting your prayers when whatever's going to happen is going to happen? Because you're not in the world. You're not, are you, are you, are you, are you submitted to the beast and the seven heads? Then go ahead and pray and worship them and do it. Waste your time. No, pray by the Spirit. Pray for the church. Pray for those that are backsliding. Pray for what the Spirit tells you to pray, not for what religion tells you to pray, because they want a better country, because they don't want, to, they don't want tribulation to come soon, and all their, all their efforts are, and they're actually praying against, against the book of Revelations and against things that are already coming. You're wasting your time. Like God's waiting for ten, ten more people. Pray that prayer. I'm going to change the United States, and we're going to give them ten more years. That's what people think. If we can just get enough people to pray and come in the solemn assembly, come together, God's mad at us because we're not together. No, He's mad because of the doctors. He's mad because you made the church an industry. He's mad because of things you don't even know of and you're still doing them. He's mad because it's a house of merchandise. He's mad because you're selling the anointing. He's not mad because you're not coming together in one big prayer meeting. Oh, no, 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 no. He's mad because you're not walking and worship Him in spirit and in truth. But when you walk in the spirit, truth is not going to happen to the judgment that's coming on the earth. <laughs> you can't change the book of Revelation with your prayer. Who do you think you are? Because if you think you can change God's word, then you, you think you're God. Prayers are a whole different thing than you think. Religion, way different. It's about relationship. It's about coming one and giving God glory. Because if He prays and you do things and He does things and people get healed... He gets glory. And no, I have news for you. Whoever's in presidency in every nation, God knew it before the foundations of the world. It wasn't your prayers. It was repentance that changes things, not your prayers. God didn't just say, when my people that are called by my name humble themselves and pray. But He said, turn from your wicked ways. It's called repent. See, everyone wants to come and pray, but nobody's repenting. So that's a big difference. That was just, I didn't know where that all came from. I mean, I know where it came from, but it wasn't part of the message. I'll get back to the point. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And I am no more of the world, and these come out of the world, though they are not mine whose name who have given me, that they may be one as we are one. And don't get me wrong, pray for the nation, but don't do it religiously. Don't, because you have a false... Well, there's liberal, there's liberal and um, dem. I don't want to say anything dumb, but liberal and Christians that aren't even believing half the stuff the Bible, and they're praying because they have a, they're in error. I mean, if you're not praying in truth, you're praying in error. So it's better not to pray than pray wrong. So it's better just to pray simple what you know. God, change me. God, heal me. God, fill me up. God, save this person. Save that person. God, do that. And then make it. And then here, in, yeah, prayer changes things, but only spirit led prayer. And another thing with spirit led prayer, spirit led prayer is word led prayer. God's told us to do some things too. 
So, although we might not all be feeling it at once, if somebody is, we need to discern the Lord's body and say, hey, the knee, the knee feels something. I better get on. Maybe I'm out of it. See what I'm saying? Well, the shoulder, no. Well, maybe God's test, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So just because we don't feel it doesn't mean it's not because if we're coming together. I'm not saying at home because uh, Mother Teresa or Sally Jo May says, well, you should be pray, pray this to Christ, you know, and you're not even know who they are. And I, but when you come together corporately, because God's going to move on other people. And then when you tap in, He'll start Him moving on you. Unless you're already set in your mind that it's all mindsets. Mind steps stop hearing God sometimes, and they stop Him flowing through us. So sometimes we do that because we... we so there's another thing about discerning the Lord's body. So, amen? So here. Amen. And now I come to thee that these things I speak to the world that they have the joy filled in themselves. That I have given them the word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world but thou should keep them from the evil that's in the world. They are not of the world neither am I of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. We get sanctified through the truth. So as we're being sanctified, we worship Him. And that's... And the Word is truth. The Word is truth. So, don't come here and start to praise and worship Him. And worship's not even a... Uh, lifting your hands on. That's just an act of reverence. Worship's... A heart issue. You either have a heart, you're worshiping something. Is it God? Because if you're following His Word, it says, if you love me, you obey me and keep my commandments. So He's saying, if, oh, don't go on Sunday and do your little Christianese stuff and throw up your hands, but you know you're going to go Monday and you're not going to follow the Word of God. You're not worshiping the Spirit of Truth. You're just wasting your time. So when all these things come together, there's a blessing and there's truth. So that's why we have it all together. Not one thing is more important than the other. Prayer is not more important than preaching the Word. But so many people get, get stuck on one thing and they make it the thing that's the most important thing. The most important thing is worship Him in spirit and in truth. In Word and in the Spirit. It says this, For the sake that I sanctify myself, that I may sanctify them through the truth. Neither pray I these alone, but for also them uh, that believe on me through their word. That they, that's us, that all may be one. Everybody say one. 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 You guys uh, awake? <laughs> thou, yes. as thou, Father, art in me, I in thee. So he's saying, Oh, Father, you're in me, Father, and I'm in you. <clears throat> That they also may be one in us. They, us, one in them. Father and Son. And what it makes us one in the Spirit. Right? One in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So when we come together and we walk in unity. To make, there's a believing that the world sees that. If, there's, if we're all separated and we got 50 million doctrines in what we're doing and everyone's doing something different, the world's not going to see truth. They're going to see chaos. Just like other religions without saying any. It's chaos. Well, that's not really. Those are radicals and this. But when the Spirit and the truth comes together and His people come together, the world can't deny the glory that, that, will, that will be revealed. That's good news for anybody that cares. <laughs> and the glory which thou gave me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. That they may be one. One in body and one in spirit. I'm not, I'm not saying body. Only you and your husband, you and your wife and husband can be one flesh. But there's a body of Christ. See what I'm saying? One body. When they say that, one body. The body of Christ. This hot is a body inside of the body of Christ. In other words, so that's important. Father, I will that they also whom that has given me be with me, and I am. See, he wouldn't have said one body if he wanted us to all just hang out with God and ourselves and have YouTube. Me, YouTube, my closet, and the Holy Spirit, and just go on Facebook and tell everybody 
There's purposes that God has, and we need to step into them because there's a blessing. And we wonder why we're struggling there. It's because we're resisting the blessing. It's not that God loves you anymore whether you do or not, but you become religious, and you don't want to become one with the Spirit because religion and the Spirit has no agreement with one another. You guys thought I got off the religious thing, huh? For a minute. I just remember it. <laughs> For thou loveth me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name. And I'll declare it, that the love, thy love wherein they have loved me, may be in them, and I in them. And us as a body. So if God is doing something, we want to be a part of it. Or we are religious. It's not the act. It's the heart. This is the truth. And it says that many become sick because they depend on supplying themselves. But God never ordained us to supply ourselves. People say, oh, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. I just get, I, I see it all the time because there are a bunch of people that have been hurt in church. Yeah, there's not, but there is a spiritual, there is a spiritual essence about being one to So they're like, oh yeah, I just get, but there's a time there might be grace, but when God says to do something, people are supposed to have been moved here and they're all, they're all religious now. Half of them, I don't know where they've gone. God spoke to them. Come here. Be part of a body. Bless you. Fear came in. Torment. This thing. That thing. And you know, where are they now? Go look them up. Go study. Go run them down. I bet you they're not doing most of them. are not going to have a relationship with God. In a sense, they're just religious. They're not advancing the kingdom. They're just religious. Even on there, where they go and make some spiritual posts once in a while that act like they're alive. You see people, they've disappeared for a while. They come up there because they're not. It's disobedience. That brings us to be the dry, like, what's it called? Uh, not, the land of not. So when God, when we know something, we've got to do it. But see, why do it religious? we still got to do it. So don't stop doing it because it's become religious. Repent and make it awesome again. Make it exciting to come together, to do what He's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Last scripture, and I'm going to um, pray. You all can stand up. Makes it seem like it's over. <laughs> but it is. Um, sacrifice is holy. Sacrifice is holy. It's not religious. What we make of it is what becomes religious. It's all about the heart. It's always been the heart. Last scripture, Acts 2, 1-4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. That means they were all thinking on Jesus. Let's just say Jesus. We're all got our mind on Jesus. One accord. They are all in one place. There's a place, right? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. See, there's something about that that people don't get it. Because... God's bigger. He could have. He could have said, "Go hide," because you're you're. They're after whoever was part of Jesus' crew. They all had a wanted in Israel. Wanted dead or alive. Get these whoever was with him. Remember, they said, "Peter, are you with one of them?" Because they were ready to wipe out the whole thing. But he said, "Stay together. Stay together and up in a, in a certain place." He didn't say, "Go hide." It would have been more in a man's mind. Everybody hide in their own houses. Act like you know. And, and just keep praying there. First of all, nobody would end up praying that long. They'd all get distracted. They'd all start to do other things. They'd forget about where they were called to, why they come together. And because why? That's what just happens. Because you're all, the world's all around you. Not the spirit. Not the body. You understand? Not the body. So there's a the thing. It's about survival. It's not about religion. And it's not about... I have to do this. It's about survival. When you see things and the way God sees them, and you see the importance in what it is, you'll be you'll become more or less religious because you'll be like you'll you'll start to judge yourself because you'll be like, no, there isn't a better way. This is the way He's ordained it because they're all and they were waiting, and I see that also as the day of Pentecost and they us were all waiting 
And, and the last, there's a great outpouring coming, but I mean, the Spirit's been here since then. It hasn't left and it's going to come back. Another revival. What is happening is people are returning, repenting and turning back to God. And, and it's going to be in a mass, mass number because the Holy Spirit hasn't left the earth. Because when He does, oh boy, it'll be big trouble here. But I'll tell you what, as He came back, as He came in the Spirit, you'll see Him this time. He's going to be riding on the clouds. And then we'll all be... It won't be a baptism of the Holy Spirit. It'll be become one in, with Him in heavenly realms. We'll meet Him in the air. We'll be one in body with Him. That is amazing. But our chances of doing that solo, go look around. Go study it out. Go look it out. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. And that's why God has ordained us to look out for one another. It says submit one to another. One to another. And it says that every joint fitly supplies. And I, I, it bothers me that the only thing people, I, all the time I get inbox all this, man, this is my church. But I, I don't really know them. I really can't help them. I really don't know anything about them. Even some people here, it's like that. Because there's walls up. It's like, I wish I could help them more or know more. But it's like, there's that. But it's like, this is all they, and this is all. And maybe God's gracing that because that's, that's where they're at. And they don't have the finances. They can't move or they can't. So, and there's nowhere around them. Or, but I know people that, that I don't feel that. And they're just, they're just, they're like little rats. They just come and grab the message. They don't give any reverence. They don't thank you. They don't even say, hey, that was a good message, this, or whatever. Or, or come and add or say, hey, the Lord showed me this about, because they're still, even though they're not here, they're still getting something from here. They're just those 100 people, 200 people, 300 people that watch messages or something that we never know about, so YouTubes or whatever, bless them, but they're missing out. Because if they would, if this, or they're getting fed here, here, and there, and they're just like that. And they're like, okay, they got this and this, but there's like, well, what's the truth? I got like 10 different things. This guy said this, this guy said that, and that guy said that. Who am I going to test? I'll just go listen to another YouTube message. I'll find the truth in this one, and I'll pop Oh, now I'm more confused. Wait, I'll try this YouTube man. Now this person. It's like instead of seeking the Lord and, and the body and, and let the truth be among one another because if something I'm saying or preaching is wrong, hey, you guys can say, hey, what, what was that? So I'm counting on you to watch me as, I, as we're watching one another. There's so much power in that. And that's why God's going to Brazil because it's easy to just to translate everything in Portuguese. Say, hey, you have it. But he wants to make a house. A hub because there's so much growing, there's so much nurturing, there's so much more that he can do, and he does when we come together, when we when we go through deliverance together, when we change together, when we believe together, when we watch and pray together. Because you'll be doing something, painting, doing this, and all of a sudden you'll have someone be in your heart, and the Holy Spirit you just start praying, and you don't even know why, and your day will go on because you're in in spirit together because you're connected and, our, and the more we come together and then we pray and, 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 and people say oh people it's the spirit goes on not my spirit the Holy Spirit it's bringing the body together in the spirit and as the spirit touches us others sometimes there's deliverance sometimes you don't even have to say anything sometimes God will tell you to say something sometimes People are being delivered by spirits and they're just quiet spirits. You don't even know that because they don't make a sound. Not everything has to be a show. God is doing it. That's right. But He's ordained it His way. And that's where the blessing is. Father, we thank You for this Word. And as the Holy Ghost fell on all them, Lord, fall on us by Your Spirit now, God. Father, we're in this one place. And God, what a great place. I hope You come back on a Sunday, Lord. At about 1.30, right while we're worshiping you. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Everyone's meeting at 10 o'clock. It's like, I told you to meet at 1. You know what? I'm going to come back at 1.30, and all of them are going to be watching football. And you're going to be in the Spirit because you listen to me. All of them listen to what everyone else was doing. 